All right, so recently um, I changed the suspension on my uh, Zero 11X. A uh, couple people were asking me questions regarding, you know, how does it work? Um, do I like it? Where did I get the parts? How did I do it? Was it difficult? I wouldn't say it was difficult, but uh, it definitely wasn't easy. Um, I'll explain in a minute. So here's just an overview um, of the scooter. Yeah, I mean, if you have one, you already know, but some people apparently want to look at it. That's the new um, suspension that I put in. It's the uh, EXA291R. It's oil dampened. So basically, um, it controls how quickly the uh, shock rebounds um, after you hit a bump or a dip in the road. And it's, uh, it's manually adjustable on the fly once you get it installed. I've got it in the front and rear at 165 uh, millimeters. I believe the suspension is actually 175. I've actually spoken in the Telegram channel to Falcon PEV, and I've actually gotten mixed answers. But on their website, um, it says 175 millimeters eye to eye. Uh, however, I've been told that it's 165. And... Unfortunately, you can't find 175 anywhere, so I just put 165s in. So if you want these shocks, go to eBay, search what I'm searching here, EXA Form 291R, and then find the 165 millimeter size. Now, I use the original springs off the stock suspension. I just unscrewed the uh, little star piece and uh, took them off and put them on and replaced because uh, these are going to come with like, I don't know, 650 pound springs, but the springs on the scooter are between 1500 and 2000 pounds. Um, so you basically you can't use the suspension that these uh, these come with. So that kind of speak towards speaks towards the difficulty of installing these because you actually have to remove the springs and put on the original springs. Um, I, you could probably go to Ally Express and if you type the keyword, it's like Taiwan uh, shock springs, 165 millimeter, but you actually want the 150 millimeter, because I tried that. I tried to get 2,000 pound um, rated springs uh, that would fit on this, but they were actually too long uh, when I ordered 165. So I think 150 um, would have worked. They took a couple weeks uh, to ship. They were like maybe $20 a spring so forty dollars so if you want to customize it if you know the exact strength of these springs and want to customize it uh go ahead so these uh these shocks have um you know an all the way oil dampened or uh, no dampening uh, settings on them i use them there's about 10 different uh ticks i guess you feel as you turn that little red knob i keep it on uh three out of ten dampening um right now it's three out of ten i'm gonna ride over some gravel, uh, back and forth on the three out of 10. And then I'm gonna ride down to the end of this road. Uh, and then when I turn around, I'm gonna have the dampening all the way off. Just these springs and shocks functioning as normal with the dampening turned all the way off. And then um, the final pass, I'm gonna turn the dampening all the way up. So it's gonna have the slowest rebound um, on that final pass. And uh, I guess you can see how these these shocks uh, these work. So I did the best I could with the camera positioning, given what mounts I had. So I'm not really going to comment anymore on this. Just uh, I guess just watch and see for yourself.
Now turning the dampening on max. And another thing about the install, I don't know if this is specific just to mine or I just didn't get lucky, but um, the front shock is actually more difficult to install than the rear because there's only one spacer on the front shock for some weird reason. So you kind of have to like, uh, you'll see it, but basically if you're going to install the front shock, um, take it out and keep it as is before you take the spring off and make the KSA, the new one, uh, look exactly the way uh, that the front shock looks. Maybe just take pictures throughout the the, uh, the install. I, I ended up to get it like that. I had to use a vise and a socket kit, kind of like uh, kind of like a MacGyver move. <laughs> 